There comes a time in your farming journey where you're going to have to make a difficult decision to get rid of livestock. And that's a decision that we recently had to make ourselves when we had to get rid of our replacement boar that we had bought that just wasn't working out. So I want to take you guys on a little bit of a journey of just how that situation came to be and how it all started. So we're going to start from the beginning and I guess tell you how it slowly developed into one of the biggest struggles that we've had with pigs this far in our pig farming journey. So we'll start from the very beginning. So last year in the spring, we had made the decision that we were going to keep back a few gilts out of our own stock, out of our nice proven sows, one of some of our best sows and our good boar. So what we did is we just incorporated those gilts into our pastured pig program and we were able to watch them grow out and pick the ones that were the best out of that group and had the best temperaments because we wanted to grow our pig operation. Um, for us, for wiener pigs, we really struggle to keep up with the demand in the spring. So we wanted to add some more sows to our herd so that we could offer more piglets for sale. Well, long story short, that plan does not seem to be working out currently. So let me tell you what went wrong. Okay, so first things first, we had this big group of gilts and we had made plans that spring to purchase another boar that would be hopefully breeding age ready by the fall so that we could get those gilts bred when they were about 300 pounds. Well, unfortunately, that plan did not work out. Um, for whatever reason, we were not able to get a boar that was unrelated to some of our sows. We wanted to get a Hereford. But where we live, Herefords are not a super common pig. And to find a line that's unrelated to the Herefords that we already have on our farm is quite difficult. Unless you're wanting to import pigs or ship from across the country. Which, because our pig operation is, is fairly new, we've been at it for about four years now. It just, and because we started small and we're slowly growing, it just wasn't uh, something that was practical for us to do. So anyways, we had this boar lined up that we were going to raise over the summer and have in the fall, but that just did not end up working out for some reason. There was a little bit of miscommunication there, I think. Um, yeah, so after that, we decided, okay, well, we're going to have to find a different replacement boar. So we ended up buying one and it was a little younger than we wanted, but he still wasn't too young that he wouldn't be able to breed our sows maybe uh, just a couple months later than what we had hoped for, but still within that kind of like peak breeding time. So we went for that. Um, we ended up driving about 10 hours to go get him one way and then 10 hours back. So it was a long drive, a big trip to go and get him. And when we got there, he was quite a bit smaller than we thought. Um, he looked younger than what we expected, but the person claimed that he was the age that she said he was. So I don't know what the deal was there. It seemed as if his growth was maybe a little bit stunted. Um, yeah, I don't know for sure, but to me, it kind of seems like there was a, an issue with nutrition, um, maybe an issue with deworming, something like that. I don't know he didn't look as good as he should have, in my opinion. But anyways, we ended up bringing him home because we'd already made the trip down there and we didn't want to waste it. And we hoped that we could get him home with, with some good groceries and some TLC that he'd improve. So we did that, we got him home. Um, and then we grew him out for a while and he just was not growing like he should be growing. He was still on the small side. So when we finally decided that we were ready to breed those gilts, um, he wasn't big enough to do that, we didn't think. So we decided to do artificial insemination again. Unfortunately, when we did our AI that first round, when the semen came in, um, when our sows were due to come into heat, it was minus 50 here. It was right at Christmas time. So I was AIing gilts on Christmas Eve and Christmas day in minus 50 and it didn't take. So 
I don't know if it was because the semen got too cold, um, despite me trying to keep it warm, or if it just wasn't stored properly, or maybe there was an issue with shipping. I don't know what happened, but either way, they didn't take. Um, I also possibly might have got them a little bit too early, maybe too late. It's really hard to tell when it's so cold outside. Um, if they're at that right stage in their heat cycle, if they're actually in a standing heat, because they come out of their shelter, they eat, and they go right back in. You don't really have the opportunity to sit out there and watch them for signs of heat, like um, humping each other and getting in each other's face and, you know, just the signs of heat that pigs have. Yeah, so unfortunately that one didn't take, and so we decided that... Because we had paid for the AI already, um, shipping's quite expensive because you have to get fresh cooled semen shipped overnight. So that's quite an expensive venture and you also have to make sure that if you are going to ship semen that you have your gilts all synced up to have heat cycles at the same time. And unfortunately, despite ours being together for their entire lives, for whatever reason, they all had heat cycles that were just a little bit different. So. We were not able to order semen for them all at one time. We had to order a couple different batches and pay shipping twice. So that was really unfortunate, but it is what it is. I know that you can sync them up with different drugs and medications, but that just was not something that we were um, comfortable doing at the time. So that's, uh, yeah, so that's where that went. And then we decided, you know what, we'll just wait and we'll let this boar that we bought grow and see if you can get the job done. Meanwhile, thank goodness we had bred our current boar that we still had to our sows that were unrelated to him. So thankfully we had a few bred sows that we were able to get piglets off of this spring. Unfortunately, uh, we had a really terrible farrowing season this spring. We had mama sows that were just super clumsy, were not paying attention to what they were doing. They were crushing their babies. So most of the litters we lost, over half of the litters. So we had really small litters. And that really put a damper on our already uh, bad season. So, yeah. Anyways, we asked around to a few different producers and asked our friends that are into pigs and asked them what their opinion was on what we should do with this boar. Um, basically, some people said that we were giving him way too many chances. We should call him and get rid of him and find a replacement. Or we had the complete opposite side of the spectrum where people said, He's just too young, you need to wait, you need to let him mature more. He's a heritage breed, so he should be a little bit older before he's ready to breed. Which I found confusing because our last heritage breed pig that we had as a boar, he was breeding our sows at seven months with absolutely no issue. But the boar that we had as a replacement, it was super weird because what would happen is we would, well, we tried a few different things. So there's a few different things you can do when you put sows in with a boar. Um, some people say that you should separate the sows from your boar at all times until they're in heat and then put them together, which is usually what we do. So we did that a few cycles. Um, that did not work. So we tried just leaving the sows in with him. That didn't work either. We tried bringing the boar to the sows. That didn't work either. And it was super weird because it was like he was super interested in breeding them, but when he would go to mount them, it was like his legs would get tired and shaky and he would just give up and go have to take a nap and I'm like buddy you didn't do anything it was super frustrating to watch and we got to the point where we were even trying to physically help him breed the sows which yeah that's fun <laughs> so yeah he didn't uh he didn't get the job done um and then when he did go on the sows another thing we noticed and I apologize if this is too much information, but if you've got this far in the video and you're watching it about pigs, I would hope that you're prepared for this type of talk. But if not, your discretion is advised. This is about to get a little graphic. Um, when he would go to breed the sows, he would get on them and it was like his penis either would not come out of the sheath at all, or if it did, it would come out just a little bit. And the semen that would come out was like this sticky, goopy, jello consistency like think of really hard gelatin that's what it looked like so obviously that was not normal and i understand that boars will leave a mucus plug in the sow after they're done breeding them but he had no normal semen that would come out ahead of time regardless 
So that was strange. Um, we got our vet involved and we tried a whole bunch of different medications. He had a little bit of a sore foot, which we thought maybe was the issue, but clearly it wasn't. We tried a round of antibiotics a couple different times. We tried dexamethasone. We tried steroids. We tried giving him a break and letting him rest. We tried lowering his feed. We tried increasing his feed. We tried making sure he was on a good deworming schedule. We had him vaccinated. We had all sorts of things going on with him and nothing was working. So it was extremely frustrating. So what we did is we decided, you know what, we are going to try AI again. So we tried two more rounds of AI and none of them took. Again, I don't know what the issue was there. Who knows, it could be a whole bunch of different things that caused it not to work. So that was frustrating. A lot of money down the drain once again. And now we don't have a boar. So we had absolutely no way of breeding our sows. We had no way of ensuring that we were going to have piglets on the ground. And by now, the breeding season, we've missed peak breeding season completely. And we are not going to have any more spring piglets besides the ones from those sows that we had bred to our other boar. And we had at the time now sold him. So he was gone. So now we also had no way to breed our mature sows when they weaned their babies. So we decided enough is enough. We're going to call this boar. We are going to get a different boar, a mature boar that is ready to breed. And we're going to just try things and hope that everything goes better for next year. So that's what we did is we drove and we got a different Hereford boar because I want to add some purebred into my breeding program so that we have a little bit less of a mutt situation going on. Not that our pigs are of low quality because all of our pigs, I think, are very good quality. We've used them on our pasture pork program. We've ate plenty of them ourselves and they are all great quality pigs. But I just wanted to add some more Hereford influence into our program because I really like that breed. Um, they seem to do well, they grow well, they do good in our type of application. And they seem to sell well, people really like them. So that's just what we wanted in our program. So yeah, we decided to find another mature boar, which we did, and we brought him home. And it was the funniest thing when we brought this new boar home. So we got the trailer up to the place where the boar was, and we hadn't even driven in the yard yet, and here comes this pig down the driveway following a bucket of grain. So we said, holy heck, get the door open. Opened up the door, he loaded right in the trailer, no problem. It was super weird. I have never seen a pig load that easily in my life. If you've ever been around pigs for any length of time, you know that they are super frustrating to load. So that was amazing, and we should have bought a lottery ticket because that does not happen on a regular basis. Anyways... He was very friendly, he was very calm, very quiet, he seemed to enjoy people, we got him home, and yeah, that was interesting, because we still had that other boar that we had not called yet, um, they did a lot of fence fighting when we first got them home, there were sows on one side, some of them were in heat, we were new people, new farm, new environment, all sorts of things happening, uh, we got him in the pen, finally, he was being extremely stubborn and extremely resistant and he acted like he was very angry and hormonal and it was just it was a hot mess anyways we finally got him in the pen and I went to go close the gate quickly and it touched him on the butt and he was facing the opposite way not looking at me and the boar was in that pen right beside him the other one and he whipped around and he took a chunk out of my leg super fast it was I couldn't even react it just happened so quick yeah so that was not fun we started off um, on a very bad note, had a very bad first impression there, but so far now that we've gotten rid of our other boar, thankfully he's settled down. Yeah, that was not fun, but take it as a reminder that you need to always be careful around animals, do not be too trusting of them. It drives me bonkers when people say that, oh, this is my sow, this is my boar, well, they're my best friend, they're so friendly, I can do anything with them. Let me tell you, when hormones are involved and things start happening, they can be unpredictable and you need to be careful because they are big, big animals, bigger than you think, and very heavy and very strong, have sharp teeth and a lot of bacteria in their mouth. So you want to be careful. Anyways, <laughs> we decided that's enough. We're getting rid of that other boar so that this does not happen again. So that's what we did is we ended up butchering him at home and it was interesting because we finally found the cause of what made him unable to breed. 
and there's nothing we could have ever done to fix it. There's nothing we could have done to change the outcome. He just never was going to be any good, no matter what we did. Even if we let him grow bigger and let him mature more, he just never, ever would have got the job done. So what happened was we ended up butchering him um, when I was skinning him out. At the very end of his penis, there was like this balloon of tissue. It was like this big sack of tissue around the end of his sheath where his penis came out and it was full of like old semen that could not come out it was like trapped in there and I don't know what caused that it was just a weird birth defect or genetic I don't know but either way he never would have been able to perform and I'm actually quite thankful that we don't have his genetics in our program because I don't want to pass that on and I don't want future breeding issues in my herd so maybe it was a blessing in disguise but we sure had to struggle a lot to get there Anyways, our new boar that we have, like I said, has settled down quite a bit now. He's quite friendly and seems a lot easier to work with. And we've bred a couple of gilts to him now. We've decided that we're only going to breed a couple of gilts kind of as like a trial run to make sure that he is able to do his job. He was a proven boar, so he did have babies on the ground, so they say. And... Yeah, we just want to make sure that he's good, and we also don't want to be stuck with a whole bunch of piglets in the fall because quite often it is difficult to sell piglets in the fall where we are. For whatever reason, people don't like to raise pigs over the winter. In my personal opinion, it's not as hard as people make it out to be. But regardless, I can't convince the entire farming population to buy piglets in the fall and raise them over winter, so... God forbid we get stuck with all those pigs and have to feed them over winter time when we already have a whole bunch of open sows that we are feeding throughout the winter so that we can have piglets in the spring. Fingers crossed that that plan works out. Yeah, so we'll have more baby pigs in end of August, early September from a couple of our gilts and hopefully our new barn will be finished by then so that we can farrow out in there. And that so far is our plan for the time being. I'm hoping that things work out now because we have had a rough year, like I said, and I don't really know how much more things we can take before we call it quits, I guess. I don't want to say that we're giving up, but it's been hard financially, emotionally, physically. <laughs> I'm healing up from a pig bite. Um, but yeah. I'm, I am positive that things are looking up and I am optimistic that next year is going to be better. We've kind of accepted the fact that we're going to have to take a big loss this year and we're going to have to feed out these gilts. We did kind of contemplate selling them and trying to make some of our money back, but then we also thought, well, then we're going to have to start over with growing our herd again. And yeah, so we just decided we're going to just feed these open sows and gilts until the fall, get them bred in the fall get them pregnant hopefully and then have lots of baby pigs in the spring and kind of start fresh so that is our new plan and thank you guys for watching this video I know it was a long one but I wanted to explain that situation to you guys because it has been a very big source of heartache on our farm in all aspects it has been a big struggle um trying to find the motivation to continue forward but I think we've made some positive progress in that regard. So stay tuned. I will let you guys know how things go in our fall breeding season. And hopefully we have lots of pregnant mama sows for spring babies. And that we can turn the situation around and start moving forward again. Instead of one step forward, two steps back kind of thing. Hope you guys are taking care and doing well. I would really, really appreciate if you guys could like and subscribe to our channel. It helps us get our content out to a lot more different homestead viewers like you or people that are interested in our journey and what we do here on our farm. I would really appreciate if you guys could go and do that. Meanwhile, take care. God bless. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.